Our final segment profiles the Evansville Red Cross Disaster Relief Team and their efforts to help people during times of crisis. The American Red Cross was founded by Clara Barton during the American Civil War on May 21, 1881. This foundation does so much not only for our community, but also our nation in times of need. The Red Cross not only does blood drives to get life-saving blood to help with accidents and natural disasters, but also offers classes for many different things such as disaster training, health and safety, first aid, pet first aid, CPR, AED, and lifeguarding. These things that the Red Cross does for our community and our nation are much appreciated and much needed. Hi, I'm Ashley Goffinet. Here today with Julie Kreisen, the Communication Specialist for the Evansville Region American Red Cross. Thanks for meeting with us today, Julie. Thanks for being here. So, with the limited number of staff members, how do you go about getting volunteers for the Red Cross? Well, volunteers are always at our office. 24-7 we have volunteers ready to respond to disasters, both locally and nationwide. So volunteers really help with everything we do, from blood services to office help and to disasters. So we have a disaster action team or a DAT team that's ready to respond 24-7 to um, local disasters. And I've been a Red Cross volunteer since December of 2011. Um, the reason I joined the Red Cross is recently retired and I just felt it was a great organization to, uh, to donate my time to. Um, I wasn't aware at the time how much the Red Cross meant to people and what the Red Cross has done for, for during uh, disasters and catastrophes. And I've been very blessed and um, it's just amazing to, to step up and help with the Red Cross and basically do whatever's needed through being a volunteer. Presently, I am a member of the Disaster Action Team, which is first responders on local disasters. Um, we drive the IRV um, on local disasters, which most of our disasters are fires. But we're also on call. I'm a national disaster volunteer. So I've been to um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, where we were deployed during Hurricane Isaac. Uh, basically worked in bulk, bulk distribution, um, serving uh, people with uh, supplies to help them get cleaned up after the disaster. Um, I've also drove the IRV to uh, Hurricane Sandy. We were deployed originally to Pennsylvania where we helped set up shelters and um, uh, delivered supplies to various shelters. And then we were further deployed to uh, New York where uh, I spent the bulk of my time there at Long Island working out of the IRV. We were delivering food to shelters and uh, delivering food to um, uh, neighborhoods that were without electricity and power. I've had several memorable moments, but to see the devastation in New York was just unbelievable, and to see the appreciation that people have when the Red Cross shows up. I was mentioning, um, I remember, recall we were in Queens uh, one Sunday afternoon that my partner and I and two volunteers from New York took the IRV down to a, a, a really devastated neighborhood and we served over 1,200 meals. And it's very rewarding when these people, especially elderly people or people with, with young kids, they come up to you and they're so appreciative. I mean, it, it, it just makes you feel good. That's what it's all about. I'm really interested in what you guys do for the disaster relief around the country and in our community. Um, do you guys have any special vehicles for the DAT team, as you guys called it? Well, right, right here where we're standing is the IRV, which stands for Emergency Response Vehicle. And these vehicles go out into the community and can provide relief um, to those that are suffering after a disaster. They can provide food, and we can put a lot of cleanup kits and items in here. Um, right now, we're seeing some flooding so that the IRV can go out and help with that. So the IRVs are really vital to what we do at the Red Cross, and volunteers come and pick up the IRV and then head out to the scene of a disaster. My name is Ray Sullivan 
and I've been a, a local Red Cross volunteer for about five years, and I've been a national qualified volunteer for three years. This is our IRV, the emergency response vehicle. It's the main vehicle that the Red Cross uses to deliver services. Most of what is done out of an IRV is a feeding operation. We have these Cambros that are right here that are actually large uh, containers that will either hold hot food or cold food for five or six hours. Red Cross buys the food and gives it to the Southern Baptist who do most of the cooking and then they will fill these up. You can put up to 200 meals into each one of these. We will have um, a usually a, a meat, a vegetable, and some sort of dessert for each one of these. Uh, as Clem said, he's fed up to 1,200. My record was about 600 people in one day, so he's well ahead of me on that. Um, we'll take those and we will set them up on here. Um, one end of it opens up so that you can get into it easily and get the food out. You put it into a clamshell holder and hand it out to the people as they're coming along, giving them usually a drink and some fruit or something along that line that, uh, to tie them over during, uh, while they're working so hard. Um, other things, if you see all the way at the front up there, we've got hot coffee and hot water containers so that we can take uh, hot stuff out to them, particularly uh, in floods and stuff. That's pretty important because people are usually working in cold, wet conditions, and they like to be something that's good and warm on there. How are the herbs funded? Well, the Red Cross is funded solely through donations from the community. We are not a government agency, but people should know that 91 cents of every dollar donated goes directly to programs and services and helps for disasters. Do the volunteers you have have to go through certain kinds of training? Yes, and all of that training is free. Um, so we have several classes such as disaster assessment, client casework, and different classes that volunteers can take in order to be trained to respond to disasters. So a lot of the times when there is a disaster, volunteers want to help. And so we really encourage that people come and volunteer now and take that training so that they can respond to the next disaster. Responding to all these disasters probably takes a lot of supplies and blood. How do you get all the supplies and all the blood that you need? Well, through donations for the, from the community. Every blood donor is a volunteer, and they can donate one pint of blood every 56 days to the Red Cross. And so we have volunteers that are in all the time donating blood, and we have community blood drives um, all throughout each of our offices and office locations for volunteers to donate blood. You mentioned that the volunteers have to go through certain kinds of classes in order to be able to properly respond. What are the kind of classes that the Red Cross offer? Disaster assessment. So volunteers will learn how to go out to the scene of a disaster and determine what level a house is damaged or destroyed. Um, they also take classes to drive IRVs, like what we see right here, the emergency response vehicle, to f figure out how to drive this correctly, what items need to be put in the IRV before they head out to the scene. And then we have CPR and first aid courses that volunteers can take um, to make sure they're prepared for disasters. Are these herbs only used locally or do they go different places besides our region? They actually go nationwide, so our volunteers can come and drive these herbs um, to nationwide disasters. Um, what have they been used on recently? Well, this herb actually just got back most recently from Hurricane Sandy. It was out there for several months um, delivering food and supplies to those affected by Hurricane Sandy. So these herbs are definitely put to great use and um, we're just very appreciative that our volunteers are willing to do that for us. Well, thank you for meeting with us today, Julie. Thanks for having me. Reporting for the EVSC Community Link at the Evansville Region American Red Cross in front of the herb, this has been Ashley Goffinet. For more information, contact Evansville Red Cross at 812-471-7200 or visit www.redcross.org forward slash tristate.